Three, oh yeah, we're two, recording. One, oh, yeah. zero, <laughs> two. It's always a good time. We're having a good time. The problem is half his followers are here. They're called subscribers, Trey, and that's not true. I've got about 285 at this point in time. So if you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button and join in on the fun. This was a round I played down in Waco with a couple of buddies at Bear Ridge Golf Club. Uh, first hole is a little dogleg right. You've got death to your left with a creek and trees, and it runs off that way. So trying to hug the right-hand side with just a driving iron keep it towards the trees and if it draws it draws right's an okay miss left is not that's a pretty good shot but it's sticking out there to the right not drawing quite as much as i'd like once i got up to this i realized that there was an overhanging tree on the right so that's actually a pretty tight fair way to hit either way that's the good miss that's the correct side to miss on because there's no penalty and just have a little punch shot under the tree, trying to hit a low runner, trickle it onto the front of the green. Got a little Tony Romo there from Robert. As that rolled up <laughs> onto the green, pretty good little shot for a recovery shot. Got lucky with a little bounce, left myself just an 18 foot putt for birdie. Up the hill, breaking from my right to left. Oh, hello. Tweet, tweet. Never birdie the first hole. I'll be honest, I cold topped that from behind the tree. But it worked out, which brings us to the second hole, a short 120 yard par three. Pins in the middle, just a little wedge for Trey. Course knowledge there? Yeah. And his trickle down the hill to a pretty nice little location on the back of the green putt for birdie. This is somewhat in between clubs, but hitting the gap wedge, a little downwind, not trying to hit it hard. Pins in the middle of the green, so nothing too tricky here. Fire away. Hey Trey, what's my uh, YouTube channel called? The good miss. <laughs> Be jealous, that was a good shot. I've left myself just 10 feet for birdie for on the second hole. How did that go in? I told you I pulled it when I hit it, it still went in. I like these greens. Not every bad putt misses, not every good putt goes in. That's a birdie. And a good par from Trey after running it well past the hole. Should I say it? You can't birdie them all if you don't birdie the first two. <laughs> My buddy Robert had just had his firstborn. We were sneaking out to play a little golf here while he was on paternity leave. This is another tricky par four, a little dogleg right second shots up the hill. But again, the fairway gets tight, especially for somebody who likes to hit a draw, because the left side is dead. I'm asking if I can hit driver if I carry it over the trees on the right hand side. This is a case where I'm really kind of forcing a shot that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, trying to get it closer to the hole. And in doing so, I've created a hole in a shot shape that is not comfortable. It's going to take a lot of commitment to pull this off. I'm aimed well out over the right hand side trees. But I couldn't commit to that line. Pulled it just a little bit left, it landed in the middle of the fairway, but bounded well forward and into the hazard. That's the bad miss. I could have blown it as far right as I needed to, but I didn't, and so I am taking a drop on the third hole. Still leaving myself an uphill shot. This is about 130 yards, but it's uphill. Uh, not a lot of wind help, so I am hitting a nine iron from the rough. 
The pin is in the middle of the green, so keep it out to the right hand side. Avoid the hazard on the second shot. And I took off on a good line, but was a couple of grooves low. Didn't quite get all of that. Hey, thank you. The key thing here was to eliminate the big miss and the big number, just getting it on the green, and I did that. So even though I hit it thin, that would be a good miss. Left myself just a little over 33 feet to four par. Chance to get out of here and stay two under. That comes up just a few rolls short, and it's a bogey. Still not bad considering the penalty off the tee box, I'll take that. Which brings us to the fourth hole. This is another tricky one if you haven't played the golf course. Another dog leg right uh, with water on the right hand side in this case. Usually there's pretty long rough there on the right, in this case it was mowed down and because of the drought there wasn't a lot of grass. So I was looking at this with the Par Golf app and I could see that it's only 300 yards roughly to the water. Unfortunately, I let Trey get in my ear a little bit and convince me that it wasn't drivable to the water. I still aimed left of it, but with this little bit of a block that's headed straight for the lake and downhill, downwind, I easily bounded this ball well into the lake and that'll be my second penalty in two holes. Bit of a mental mistake there. I knew that that lake was probably reachable with as firm as it was, but uh, Got talked into trying to hit driver anyway. Now at this point, I know I'm taking a penalty, so I've got to make a good decision to not make the number worse. It's 220 yards to the flag. That's a little much to be hitting over that much water. So I took a little bit of a conservative line there to the left, just trying to get up and down for par from there and take my medicine, but really just trying to take double out of play. I got a little lucky and this ended up in front of the bunker in the rough on the upslope, so not too bad a chip. Pretty simple. Knock it up there and let it run out. This came up a little short of where I wanted it, leaving a little meat on the bone. I've got nine feet here for par, but again, after hitting the tee shot in the water, I would have taken that in a heartbeat. Pretty straightforward putt, not a lot of movement on this. And I just didn't hit it. Seen anybody hit in the water ever? Which takes us to the fifth hole, a par three way up the hill. The green's a good 20 feet above where we're standing. Flags right there in the middle, and that was well struck but blocked to the right. He'll have a long putt for birdie. It sounded good. How does that fare in the scoring? It sounds good. It makes his ego feel better, either way. What he said about the shot that he pulled into the weeds, he goes, oh, that, that was good. <laughs> That's good contact. I won't say that you can it. 180 yards for me, straight up the hill, pins in the middle, so that's just a six iron. You can see that the elevation in the Park Golf app is showing me this is 19 feet uphill, so it's gonna play a little bit longer than that 180 yards, but a six iron felt right. I didn't want to be long. I figured if I just got it over the front edge, I'd be in pretty good shape. So aiming straight at the flag and firing away. And this one, the shot tracer got a little wrong, making it look like it was left, but this was right at the pin. I legitimately thought this had a chance to go in the hole. Instead, it came up only about five or six feet short, right on line. Easy tap in par for Trey after a long putt. Leaves me just this five footer for birdie to get back in the red. When I hit this, I thought I plain blocked it. I thought I didn't get the blade closed and it was a bad putt, but on further inspection, I was lined up right center, it started right center, and it kind of just bobbled offline and bounced around a little bit on me and then never came back. Really wasn't that bad of a stroke. I'm gonna blame that one on the green. That's the benefit of being able to go back and watch things in slow motion. That takes us to the sixth hole, finally a dog leg left that will fit my draw. In this case, there is water to the right hand side, so it's tough to pick a target. I used the Par Golf app and it looked like I want to aim straight over this hill to get up close to the green. I confirm that with Trey and take that line almost straight down the car path. 
anytime you're playing a course you're unfamiliar with, you got to make sure that you're committed to the line that you pick, whether you use the Par Golf app or using the advice of a friend. You want to pick a line that you can commit to and a club that you can commit to to take some of that uncertainty out of play. That's what I've done here. I'm blasting it right over that little hill, little baby draw. And that's perfect. You don't know where it ends up until you get over that hill. This actually went through the fairway on the right, so pretty big drive there. Just into the right hand side, I've left myself just a little 44 yard chip over the bunker after a 320 yard drive. I was probably a little careful there with that uh, chip shot, ran it about 18 feet by, I guess 12 feet by, and you'll take a 12 foot putt for birdie on every single hole. And after watching the other two guys leave their putt short, I did the same. This green just must have been extra grainy because that putt went nowhere. Still an easy par, and we're even par through six holes. The seventh hole is a dogleg right again. A lot of dogleg rights here. So the line is right over that tree where Trey just smashed his drive. I'm a little bit longer than Trey off the tee, so I have to aim out over that tree as well and try to Jeff keep Daniel. it out there. Jeff Daniel. Jeff Daniel. Jeff Daniel. Otherwise, I'll go through the fairway. Luckily, in this hole, there's not a lot of trouble through the fairway because that's exactly where my ball goes underneath this tree, leaving just a wedge, but no real trouble. It's just sitting up in the rough, so you got to gauge whether or not it's going to fly or not. And this ball was well struck, but with no spin, it bounds right to the back of the green. So, not a terrible shot, but I've left myself 30 feet for birdie. Not one of my best chances so far on this front nine. And after watching my playing partner hit that to the left, I did the same thing. I didn't want to tell you, I thought you were watching. <laughs> just doesn't break back to the hole. Trey grinding for par. Trey's been putting well. That's another good par, even if I wanted it to be a triple in our match. Look at that beautiful Texas sky. On the eighth hole, this is a dog leg left par five that goes kind of up the hill finally a dog leg left oh there you go big ball track get up the trap <laughs> so for me i'm really aiming over the bunker the bunker is my visual point trying to hit it way out there in the fairway you kind of want to hug the right hand side but a good drive is going to leave me no more than eight iron into this green so a great scoring opportunity after being even the last couple holes. I kind of rocked back and fell out of that one. That's why it went further left than I had intended. But after hitting the cart path, it is a long way down there. 322 yards. Leaving just this 8 iron in up the hill. Trey warned me that this green is firm and the ball tends to bounce and go to the back. I realistically probably should hit 9 iron here. Instead, I'm trying to hit a soft 8 up the hill since it's 10 feet uphill. And I flushed that. As soon as I hit it, I knew that that was probably going to be long of the pin anyway. But on the green, I should have a putt for eagle. And that left me just 30 feet for a big bird. Pretty straight putt, just get the speed right. That broke off a little bit to the left, realistically never had a chance, but just a tap in putt for birdie. But it. <laughs> I want to see it. And we're back in the red after eight holes. Through eight holes, I've really hit the ball better than I've scored. Oh! 
brutal. <laughs> I wasn't even going that fast. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. We all kind of had some nice harmony there. Through eight holes, I'm one under par, and really that's about as bad as I could have scored. I've got two penalties. I've missed a five footer. I've missed a nine footer where I hit good putts. So playing well, even if the score is not showing it, that's the danger of playing a course you've never played before. Got to eliminate those penalties. The ninth hole is one of the longer par fours, and it is straight as an arrow. On the camera, it looks like a pretty wide fairway, but realistically, it was pretty narrow with trees on both sides pinching in. Hitting a good drive is critical here, but it is bombs away straight away. And that was my best drive of the front nine. 309 yards straight down the middle. Nice laser beam. A little fist pump. Happy with that one. Really, that was just to aggravate Trey. And that leaves just a little wedge in, hitting a 52 from 116 yards. I feel like the wind was behind me. Kind of in between clubs again and caught that a little bit heavy. So it went the right distance, but not the right direction. Not a bad shot, but I would have hoped to be better than 19 feet from that distance with that club. I know that's about the PGA Tour average and it's still considered a good shot, but this shot was not difficult. Oh, and that was a really good butt that just comes up a little bit on the low side. Nonetheless, a course I've never played in a match against my buddy, and that's a very easy one under on the front nine. Trey for a chance to birdie to win the hole. He hits the high side. Good stroke. One great thing about the Par Golf app is you can play with friends. You can invite them to play with you. You have a shared scorecard. You can even make it net so where you can play with handicaps and see strokes. In this case, Trey got three pops on me on the front nine. I still was able to pull it out on the front nine. Stay tuned for the back to see if I can close out this match against Trey. Download the Par Golf app. Enjoy the friends mode. Like and subscribe. Let's grow the channel.